welcome to ML Dan. This is Mehran, all the way from Dublin, Ireland, recording the next lecture on the lecture series Concept Learning and General to Specific Ordering. So, a quick recap. So, previously we talked about what a hypothesis space is and what type of constraints we've got there. And also, we answered the following questions uh, about the number of possibilities of the instance space and the number of possible hypotheses in, uh, in your hypothesis space call H. Now, today we will talk about this idea of general and specific and we learn how we can compare hypotheses with respect to each other in terms of one being general than the other. Now, <coughs> as we said before, in our familiar table we want to learn the concept of play, yes? So, basically the learner searches through our hypothesis space to find that best hypothesis that would fit our training data. And if only there was a way for our learner to have a smart method to search through the hypotheses in the space, that would have been great, yeah? Um, as in, um, only search the ones that you need to search. Um, unless you really have to, don't go towards certain directions in your search space. So basically make it more sm much, much smarter. And the answer to that is yes, we have a way to do that. And that's some sort of ordering, yeah? So we order the hypotheses with respect to certain thing that we're gonna talk about, right? So just for now, um, notice that we can order the hypotheses from the most general hypothesis to the most specific one. And that order would basically guide uh, our probing uh, machine learning algorithm that uh, so that it could uh, find the best way to search the space. In order to clarify this more, consider this, uh, these two hypotheses, yeah? So H1 says, I want rainy for sky, warm for temperature, and strong for wind. And H2 says, I want rainy for sky, I don't care about the temperature, and I want strong for wind. So can you, looking at the example table, can you tell me which one of the our, which one of our examples would satisfy each one of these hypotheses? So you can just pause the video and think about it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and answer the questions. Now, consider the following hypotheses. So H1 says, I want the examples to have rainy for sky, warm for temperature, and strong for wind. However, hypothesis number two, H2, says that all the examples that could satisfy me have to have, they must have rainy for sky, strong for wind, and I don't care what type of temperature that particular example has. Now, let's together define, basically find the training examples that would satisfy each one of these uh, hypotheses. So if we number them, number one, number two, number three, and number four, so which one of these examples would satisfy H1? Obviously, we got rainy, warm, strong, and the only one that has all three values is hypothesis number four. Yes. However, for hypothesis number two, which examples? We've got four definitely satisfies it. Also number three, right? Because number three has rainy and strong, but at the same time, even though for temperature it has cold, but guess what? H2 doesn't care about that, yeah? Now notice, the example that satisfied H1, basically all the examples that could satisfy H1, which in this case is just one, also satisfied H2, but not the other way around. Not all the examples that would satisfy H2 could also satisfy H1. The example number three can satisfy H2, but it cannot satisfy uh, H1. So as you can see, you, you basically can understand that H2 seems to be more general, as in it encapsulates more training examples than H1. And that is kind of informally when wh where we say H2 is more general than H1. Now, before we go through the formal introduction of this idea of more general than or equal to between two hypotheses, we have to just remind ourselves of two important things. Number one, for a given example x in your instance space and a given hypothesis h in your hypothesis space, we say that x satisfies your hypothesis if and only if h of x equals one, meaning that uh, if you consider the values 
of your example and look at your hypothesis, each value will satisfy each the, its corresponding constraint. So the hypothesis would be satisfied. And that is how we show it. We say h of x equals 1. Number two, more general than or equal to relationship, the one that we just talked about between two hypotheses, is only based on the sets of examples that satisfy each one of the two hypotheses. So if the examples, all the examples that can satisfy one hypothesis can also satisfy the second hypothesis, uh, then we can say that the second hypothesis is either equal to hypothesis one or more general than that, meaning that there could be cases where it can sa satisfy H2 as well, but guess what? They couldn't satisfy H1. Now, let's dig into a more technical and academic introduction. So consider you've got H of J, one hypothesis, and H of K, the other hypothesis. And capital X is, as always, your instance space. And this notation over here means that hypothesis J is more general than or equal to hypothesis K. So more general than or equal to is that notation. So we can say that about H of J if and only if for all the examples in your instance space, if all of them that can satisfy H of K can also satisfy H of J, then we can say that H of J is more general than or equal to H of K. Let's get more comfortable with this notation, yes? So consider this example, this table. So define the more general than or equal to relationship between these hypotheses. You can pause the video and think about it. Basically, I want you to tell me which one of these is more general than or equal to the other one. Now, I'm gonna solve it. So for hypothesis number one, we need sunny and strong for the first and third attributes. So we got sunny and strong for example number one. Oops, sorry. Yes, so number one satisfies it. And we've got sunny and strong for example number two. That also satisfies it. And we don't care about warm and freezing because of this question mark over here. We don't care about that. Now, hypothesis number, say, three, H3. We need sunny and warm about first and second attributes, and we don't care about third one. So sunny and warm, that would be number one and number five. Yeah, two doesn't satisfy that, yeah? Because two has freezing for temperature, but we require it to have warm for hypothesis number three. And for hypothesis number two, we just need the first attribute to be sunny and we don't care about the second and third attribute, right? So here we have example number one, number two, and number five. Basically a collection of the examples that can satisfy both H1 and H3. So what can we say here? We can definitely say that H2 is more general than or equal to H1. That's for sure, because all the examples that can satisfy hypothesis number one, they can also satisfy H2, right? What about H2 and H3? That's right, H2 is again more general than or equal to H3. Very good. However, the tricky part, can we say that H1 or H3, can we say any of them, each, like any of them is more general than or equal to than the other? Notice, they have some sort of intersection between the examples that would satisfy each one of them. So example one satisfies both of them, but example number two can satisfy H1, but cannot satisfy H3, same way. Example number five can satisfy H3, but cannot satisfy H1. Because of that, you cannot consider this relationship between H1 and H3. So the only example that can satisfy both of them is example number one. So you want sunny for sky, and the other attributes have to have warm for temperature and have to have uh, strong for wind. I hope that this has uh, cleared this uh, much better.
Last important note, number one, this relationship of more general than or equal to is defined independent of the target concept, independent of your ground truth and your uh, training examples, okay? It has nothing to do with that. We will focus on this and we will explain to you why we don't care about that bit. So uh, in both cases of a more general than or more general than or equal to, uh, basically operations we are interested in the instances that satisfy the hypotheses regardless of their classification label okay don't uh, uh, basically don't forget that because this, this is really important so we don't care about the target concept value also known as the ground truth perfect great I hope that you've enjoyed this video and it's, it's been useful for you. So in case you want to follow us on Twitter or join us on Facebook, uh, the links are in the description. Also, please, if you enjoyed this video and was useful for you, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, also, feel free to visit my website, mldon.com, where you'll find courses on a variety of topics of machine learning. Also, you'll find my blog posts. Also, more importantly, there is a blog post link in the description that dives into more detail of this particular lecture that we went through. So on behalf of MLDAN, take care of yourselves and goodbye.